name is Salil Gadia. I am a maths teacher by profession. I strongly believe that concepts is the right way to learn maths. I am here to clear a few misconceptions about triangles today. Let's get started. So here is a list of six misconceptions related to triangles. Let's take a look at them. The first one is median drawn in a triangle bisects the vertex angle. The second misconception is altitudes drawn in a triangle bisect the vertex angle and the base. The third one, any line drawn from the vertex of a triangle always divides the vertex angle into two equal parts. The fourth one, obtuse angle triangles don't have altitudes. The fifth one says Pythagoras theorem allows for interchanging of the sides and hypotenuse which means in the Pythagorean theorem if I interchange the sides with the hypotenuse that's fine that is one misconcept and the last one is any CVN drawn from a vertex has to be one of the three it's either an altitude a median or an angle bisector let's take a look at all these six misconcepts and let's get them cleared today so let's focus on the first two misconcepts that were discussed earlier the first misconcept was median drawn in a triangle bisects the vertex angle now let's first understand what the term median is. Suppose I have a triangle ABC and I find the midpoint of the side BC. Midpoint would mean a point which is equidistant from points B and C. So suppose we mark that particular point as D that would mean the length of BD is equal to the length of DC. Now when I join A with this particular point this line is called the median. Now this median is going to bisect the base into two equal parts. So suppose this complete length was 8 centimeters. This is going to be bisected as 4 centimeters and 4 centimeters. Therefore the median is only bisecting the base into two equal parts. It has nothing to do with these two angles. These two angles might be equal if it was an equilateral triangle or an isosceles triangle but in all other triangles these two angles would be different therefore the median drawn does not bisect the vertex angle in any way suppose I take the midpoint of AB which is say E then E divides the line AB into two equal parts so if the length of AB was 12 centimeters then it is going to be split as 6 and 6 now when I join E with C it does not mean that angle C is getting divided into two equal parts. It is only the base which is getting divided and that particular line is called the median. So the summary is median is going to divide the base into two equal parts but not the vertex angle. Now let's shift to the second misconcept. It says altitudes drawn in a triangle bisect the vertex angle and the base. Again let's take a triangle and let's draw an altitude. So suppose the triangle here is P, Q and R. So in triangle P, Q, R, suppose from this particular point P, I drop a perpendicular. Perpendicular would mean that particular line has to be perpendicular to the base Q, R, which is shown by the symbol over here. Therefore, in this case, we say that P, M is perpendicular to Q, R and therefore P, M is called the altitude. In this case, the altitude is only going to be perpendicular to the base. It is not going to divide the base into two equal parts. Neither is it going to bisect the vertex angle. Hence, the altitude drawn is only perpendicular to the base. It holds no relation to the vertex angle and it holds no relation to the base either. The third misconcept says, any line drawn from the vertex of a triangle always divides the vertex angle into two equal parts. So let's consider this particular triangle. So I have drawn a triangle. Let's name it as ABC. Now any line drawn from say the vertex A. So from A I can actually draw any number of lines. One line could be like this. Say let's name this line as AD. The other line could be drawn somewhere over here. And that's AE. And there is going to be one extra line say which is going to exactly bisect the vertex angle. So let's name this point as F. Now the misconcept is that when I draw this particular line AD, 
children tend to think that it is always dividing the vertex angle into two equal parts what i mean by that is if say this particular angle a measures 80 degrees then if i draw any line over here they tend to think that this 80 degree gets split into two parts which is 40 and 40 now that's absolutely not true the angle will get split only when you draw the angle bisector so in this diagram in triangle abc i have taken i have taken the line segment af as the angle bisector so if i consider af to be my angle bisector then this particular angle that is angle baf is going to be exactly equal to angle caf so angles are going so the vertex angle is going to be split into two equal parts only when i draw the angle bisector and not in any other case I hope this clears the confusion. Now moving on to the fourth question. Obtuse angle triangles don't have altitudes. So let me draw a couple of obtuse angle triangle. That's one. And that's second. So let's name this triangle as triangle ABC and triangle DEF. <coughs> now from the vertex B, I can always draw an altitude. So we know that an altitude is a line which is perpendicular to the base. So I can definitely draw an altitude from the vertex which contains the obtuse angle. Over here angle B is obtuse. So from this particular vertex I can definitely draw an altitude. Now the point of confusion is how do I draw an altitude from A or C? Because I cannot draw an altitude which is within the triangle because that is going to create another obtuse angle. So the, so the way you do this is the meaning of altitude is basically the vertical height separation between the two parallel lines. One line passes through the vertex and other is the base itself. So here the altitude is actually drawn external to the triangle. So over here we would consider this particular line AX to be our altitude. Therefore, in an obtuse angle triangle, altitudes do exist. In case of the vertex which holds the obtuse angle, it is within the triangle. The altitude is seen to be within the triangle. But in case of the other two vertices, the altitude actually lies external to the triangle. So, if you think that obtuse angle triangles don't have altitudes, that's not true. You have one altitude which is within the triangle and the other altitude is external to the triangle. In this case, I am now going to draw all the three altitudes. So, E is the obtuse angled vertex. So, I just draw an altitude within the triangle, say EX. Now, I am going to extend this line FE and I am going to drop a perpendicular from D to the extended line FE. Let's assume it is at Y. So, here DY is the altitude considering D to be the vertex. And suppose I take the point F. So if I want to draw the altitude from F, I will have to extend this particular line and then drop a perpendicular from F to that extended line. So that's going to be FZ. You will notice here that the only vertex which was obtuse angled has the altitude within the triangle while the other two altitudes lie external to the triangle. So I hope this clears the misconception that you cannot draw altitudes in an obtuse angle triangle. You can. From the obtuse angle vertex, you draw it within the triangle and from the other two vertices, the altitudes lie external to the triangle. So the fifth one says, Pythagoras theorem allows for interchanging of sides and hypotenuse. So what we mean by that is, in the Pythagorean theorem or the Pythagorean equation, we are allowed to change the sides and the hypotenuse and that is what students tend to do. So Pythagorean theorem is actually applicable for right angle triangles. So let's consider this right angle triangle PQR and let's label these sides also as H, H is for hypotenuse. So PR is the side which is opposite to the right angle and therefore it is the longest side and it is the hypotenuse. Then you have, let's label the other two sides as A and B. Now Pythagoras theorem says the square of the hypotenuse is sum of the squares of the other two sides. So if I consider this to be my Pythagoras equation or Pythagoras theorem, now what children tend to do is, suppose 
they are given the value of hypotenuse and side say suppose you are given the value of hypotenuse is say 17 centimeters and side a is 8 centimeters what they tend to do is they tend to think that the unknown variable which is b in this case is to be written on the left hand side and they tend to find the value of the other side using this equation so what they tend to think is the unknown part has to be written on one side whereas the known two parts have to be written on the other two sides now this is absolutely wrong Pythagoras theorem specifically says that square of the hypotenuse is sum of the squares of the other two sides so you cannot change the position of the hypotenuse and the sides without the signs getting affected for example one variation here could be that if since h square is equal to a square plus b square and if I want to find b square I can definitely transpose a square to the other side and I can write h square minus a square is equal to b square this is perfectly okay because you are still following the Pythagoras theorem and you are only transporting one variable or oh sorry one known part to the other side and this should hold true or if you know b for instance and you know h and you are trying to find a you can write this as a square equals h square minus b square so you will notice that when we are transposing the known parts to the other sides we are taking care of change in the signs and this is absolutely valid so if you write the Pythagoras theorem as a square is equal to h square plus b square or b square is equal to h square plus a square simply because your a's and b's were unknown that's not right you have to follow the Pythagoras theorem and then you can transpose the known parts to the other side now let's take a look at the sixth one any CVN drawn from the vertex has to be an altitude median or angle bisector now let's see what a CVN is consider this triangle say M N O now a CVN is a line which is drawn from any vertex so I am picking the vertex M I can draw a CVN if I draw a line to the other to the opposite side from the vertex this particular line is called a CVN so you must have noticed that I can actually draw infinite number of CVNs now the altitude median and angle bisectors are just three types of CVNs so it's not true that every CVN that you draw has to be one of the three let me draw another triangle over here say ABC if I take the midpoint of BC and mark it as X then AX becomes my median as we saw earlier if I draw a line perpendicular to BC from A this is called altitude whereas if I draw a line which bisects this particular angle into two equal parts then this particular line is called the angle bisector it is true that all these three are CVNs but it's not true that every CVN has to be one of these three unless it is mentioned in the question or unless it is specified in the diagram you shouldn't consider any CVN to be one of these three I hope this clears up the concepts so to conclude a median of a triangle is going to divide the base into two equal parts and nothing else in case of equilateral triangles or isosceles triangles there are some special properties but remember that a median divides the base into two equal parts and that is it in the second case the altitude of a triangle is always perpendicular to the base it has no relation to the sides of the triangle neither does it have any relation to the angles at the vertex it is a line which is drawn from a vertex perpendicular to the base and you can have three altitudes drawn as, as in this particular diagram the angle bisector is the only CVN which divides the vertex angle into two equal parts sure in case of equilateral and isosceles triangles there could be some extra special properties but in case of other triangles angle bisector is the only CVN which divides the vertex angle into two equal parts so if this complete angle was x it gets divided as x by 2 and x by 2 in obtuse angle triangles altitudes are definitely possible you can have three altitudes the altitude from these two vertices will lie outside the triangle and the altitude from the 
obtuse angle vertex will lie within the triangle but three altitudes are given for any type of triangle. In case of Pythagoras theorem the hypotenuse square is going to be sum of the squares of other two sides. You may interchange or you may shift variables from one side to the other but you have to take care of the signs. And all these so in this particular triangle ABC I have drawn multiple CVNs. Only three of these are going to be medians, altitudes and angle bisectors. All the other CVNs need not divide the base into two equal parts nor are they going to be perpendicular and neither are they going to divide the vertex angle into equal parts. So I hope this sort of clears up the confusion and I will now see you in the next video uh, clearing some other misconceptions in maths. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.